Welcome back to Glamour with me, Josh Smith, and today we're joined by the living legend, Danny DeVito, Colin Farrell, the amazing Ava Green, the cutest cast on the planet. It's the Dumbo Guys! I pretty much ugly cried for 90 minutes straight during this film. Yeah. And I wanted to know, what type of crier are you? An ugly oh, yeah. crier? Are you a single solo tear crier? Oh, I'm a kind of like a try to hide it crier. Mm -hmm. On the plane, I have no shame. I cry <laughs> all the time. There's something with the altitude. I'd be a bit of a shame crier sometimes. I, you know, I, yeah, I'd be covering the face a little bit for fear that I'm an ugly crier. I, I can vacillate between having a, a gentle weep and a good shoulder shrugging boohoo. You know, you look into those eyes mm. once Gumbo's born. Got those eyes. Oh my goodness, it's just like you melt. The what premiere was in Los Angeles was sponsored by Kleenex, yeah. which I thought was very clever. <laughs> How could you crying on demand in real life? Are you going to create a circus boot camp? and I was gonna enroll in it. Yeah. What which kind of training oh, would you put I me through? I know, can you type rope walk? Have you ever done it? I you can't know, say they do I've done it. I think it would be great. Yeah, maybe yeah. this could be something I can practice for like yeah. a Saturday night. As they say, no pain, no gain. Just put the rope really low. I was living for all the tricks that you're doing in this. First of all, you need to be super strong. Mm. You need to get some very strong abs uh, because you have to kind of do some piking position. I mean, it's Ooh. quite, you know, you and you have to do lots of weird flips and stuff and you have to pull yourself as well. I have to say though, I think I might just stick to being the clown because that sounds like a lot of work effort in a gym. Yes, but then it's very empowering. There's something mm. quite magical about that. You, you feel like you're never going to make it work and then mm. one day, there we go. that's it. Now, I was just wondering because obviously Dumbo flies with his ears. Would you prefer to have ears that could fly that are always that size? A nose that will extend to a trunk every time you lie, or like an elephant, never be able to forget anything ever. Never able to forget anything ever might be a torture. The trunk would get bigger every time I lied. Yeah. Hmm. Is this a, a program that goes on television? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna go with the ears. I'm gonna mm. go with the ears so that I can fly anywhere I want. I'd, I'd be all right dealing with big ears and the social mm. ridicule that would inevitably come my way if I could take flight. Yeah. yeah. I would go to Jersey with my ears. But I would move those guys who, my New Jersey friends. Imagine if I rolled into Asbury Park flying with, <laughs> oh my God, that would be so great. I wanna be Dumbo. Well, one of the heart, most heartbreaking moments of this is when Dumbo gets turned into a clown. Yes. And that's really sad because mainly because no one likes to see a bad makeover. Mm. Have you ever in your life had a bad makeover and how have you recovered from it? I mean, first of all, I like Dumbo's makeup yeah, uh, so as, a, as a clown because it's very Tim Burton. I'm like, I actually like that. Yeah. I know he's, yeah, anyway, that's another thing. Oh, I don't know. You know, when I was like um, 16, mm. I was in the American school in, in Paris and every day was a fashion show. I don't mm. know because I used to be in the French system before. Yeah. So there was no makeup and it was, I was not expressing myself really. And yeah. I, when I got into the American system, I was like, yeah. So every day I'm going to put like purple eyeshadow, a bit of purple lipstick here, like a purple Boa. The next day, the <laughs> green, green. I mean, it was like, it was like a teenage crisis, probably. It's like Gossip Girl and steroids. That. Yeah, totally. How mischievous are you guys on very, set? Very, very. Mm. Oh, quite a few pranks on set. What was the top prank? <laughs> oh, stealing people's ID cards. I forgot. We we would go around and like snatch people's like. You had we would just be like, to get oh, into hey, how buildings are you? And we'd steal. Them. Nico did it at first, and then she taught me, and we were like. Ninjas, we could just <laughs> take it, no one noticed. <laughs> we like so run we away ninjas. and hide. Stealth ninjas. Yeah. yeah. All the time. And one of the most amazing things to take away from this as well is about celebrating difference. Mm. What would you say to someone who is probably suffering from feeling isolated because of their difference? What kind of empowering mantra would you want to give to them? You know, it's okay to be, to feel a bit strange, to, to not fit in. Um, you know, just embrace who you are, embrace your, your uniqueness and, you know, it will make you actually quite beautiful and special. But everyone is different. There's eight billion of us nearly on the planet and there's no two of us that are the same. So, you know, I think self-acceptance is a huge thing and it's a very hard thing for most human beings and something that we all struggle with and I struggle with. And um, but yeah, the more one can accept that, that one is perfect just as one is and, and it's not really for the world to tell us our, our worth ever. We have to kind of find it from inside. It is important to have community, it is important to have people we can lean on and people that love us and, and respect us, absolutely. But the more we can give that love and respect and attention to ourselves, you know, the better. Yes. Finger clicks to that.